Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 77 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And uh, I'm recording this on Saturday, so you're listening to this tomorrow. If, if, you're, uh, if you're organized, if you know what you're doing with your week, if you like every day, every Sunday, I listen to the Spearhead Sundays podcast, and then I do whatever else I do on Sunday. If that's you, then, you know, I was just saying these words yesterday. But if you're one of those people that are like, on oh, Mondays... When I go to work, on the way there, when I'm driving, or when I take the train, or when I walk, I listen to Spearhead Sundays on a Monday. Um, and that's basically the other half of the people. Or if you're just one of those disorganized cunts that listens, that, that are like, I, every day, I'm going to listen to 20 minutes of the podcast, and then get distracted by something else. <laughs> Because I have no attention span, I think that covers the rest of the podcast listeners. All right, so whichever one of those you are, I'm happy that you're tuning in. And um, man, I've just been, I'm doing, I'm doing a standing podcast today. I've got a standing desk. Listen to this shit, it's electronic. Dude, it's like a fucking spaceship, right? I went to, uh, I can't remember if I've talked about this. It happened ages ago. I went to Officeworks and I got myself a, an electronic desk. So now I can, I can uh, it has the little buttons on it and I can, I can work standing or I can work sitting. And you know what? It's done wonders for my posture because I used to, and also I got a chair that has no back. I got a stool. I just work on a stool now because I had a, I had a chair that, that had a back and it just made me lazy. Like I would slouch in it or I would or I would lean back and even though my back was straight, like I was lean back too far. You know when you do that? And it's like, oh but my back's straight and then your hips are like, Yeah, but I'm at a fucking 130 degree angle over here. Look, I don't know what 130 degree angle looks like. <laughs> I'm just making shit up. But you know what I mean? Leaning too far backwards. Not good. And because I'm so fucking long, I need to look after my back. Like, I remember making a decision when I was about 15 of, like, fuck, I need to stand up straight. Because so I think it was one time I just saw, because my grandpa, he's quite tall. He's probably six, oh, probably six three or six four. Um, and he's, he's got really good posture because he's very active still. He's like an architect and he uses his brain and he uses his body because he runs a little farm. And, uh, and, but and so I always kind of was like, I looked at him and I was like, oh yeah, cool. That's just what happens to old people. They, they just look old, but they don't ex exactly act old. And then I met an old person. Like, you know, I think there's a difference between a person who's like 70 something and then an old person. You know what I mean? Like an old person has just let their body go and, and it doesn't work anymore and they're slow and every time they get up, they have to go, <laughs> like those ones. My grandpa's not like that. He's very active and my, my grandma is, is also very active as well. And I think it's like a mixture of, because my grandpa still works, he's an architect, and he's, so he's still always using his brain and then, and then running around the farm. And then my grandma, you know, she's always reading and doing shit and leaving the house. But then you look at, the, at old people and, and you just see that they, like, they hit the retirement age and they're like, oh, I'm retired. That means uh, I'm just going to sit here and watch TV. That's what retired people do. Like, they just, they, they, they left their job. And then they were like, fuck, I've got no hobbies. I'm not going to change that. <laughs> I'm just going to sit down forever. And then uh, I wonder why my body doesn't work because I've just stopped using it. And I wonder why I've got dementia now. I just don't use my fucking brain. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, I was like, uh, when I was like 15, I saw an actual old person that was quite tall and, and no shit. There's this guy that walks around in my area, actually. He, he looks like a semicircle. <laughs> like, like, I'm not kidding. He walks around with a walker and he, dude, he looks like 60 something. He doesn't look that old, but he walks around with a walker and his back is so curved that he's like looking at his feet and like, he doesn't look forwards. When I look at him, he looks like a hunchback and it's not, it's doesn't seem to be like a, like a deformity. It just looks like he never stood up straight for his whole life. And, and that's just gradually where he's ended up. And I've never seen him look forwards. Like, I've got no idea how the cunt knows where he's going. Because he's, <laughs> he's always looking at the ground. Like, directly at the ground. I can't even... I can't properly explain it on the podcast. But just... If you're listening to this, just stand up. 
All right. And you know that, that, that stretch where you don't bend your knees and you just go to touch your toes and, and you see how far down your hands can go down your legs. Just do that. See how, get, get to like halfway to your shins and then, and then move your arms and put them in front of you like you have a walker, but keep looking at your feet. That's this guy's posture. <laughs> Dude, imagine if there's like a thousand cunts just fucking listening to this podcast, standing and staring at their feet. That's why I love doing this, because I can just make you look like a fucking idiot for no reason. I bet you feel stupid now. <laughs> I did when I was doing it. I think I was probably too far away from the microphone then. But, you, you know, that's what he, that's the only way I can properly demonstrate what this guy looks like. And he just looks like that all the time. And it, it's like, I look at him, I'm like, dude, how do you not have, like, the coolest shoes ever? Like, that's what you look at all day. Why wouldn't you wear, like, some fucking Air Jordans? <laughs> or, or, like, light-up shoes? Give you something nice to look at? He should, he should, um... Oh, dude, you know what he should get? He should strap a GoPro to the top of his head, like directly on top of his head, so that when he looks at the floor, the GoPro looks forwards, and then he could get like a little LCD screen on both of his feet, and that way he could see where he's going. You know, like when you reverse in an expensive car, and the ca reversing camera shows up, and it has those directing lines? And it'd have that, but <laughs> on his feet, and he's got the GoPro on his head, and then he could see where he's going. What am I saying? Oh yeah, I, I got uh, when I was fifteen. I saw I saw a person like that, and I was like, "Fuck, that's gonna be me if I don't stand up straight." So I, I made a conscious decision to stand up straight, and I've really good standing and walking. Hold my shoulders back, keep my chin up, and my titties out. But when I sit, I, it's bad because the reason why I slouch when I sit is because generally things are just not made for me. You know what I mean? Like I'm too fucking long. I'll sit down in a chair and it, and it, and I imagine it, I f I feel like how you feel when you sit in a toddler's seat. Like my my knees most of the time are above my hips, which is really bad because that just naturally makes your your back curve because it's basically like you're squatting doing a shit before we invented toilets. And that's how I sit most of the time because chairs are just too low for me. So I, I've gotten a stool that goes super high. Like, listen, I want you to listen. Let me put it all the way down. All right, I, I'm, it's all the way down. I want you to listen to how high it goes, okay? Just imagine. Did you hear how long that took? <laughs> it goes really high. This thing goes up to like my waist, which is too high, which is great. So now I can actually have a fucking chair that fits me. And I have a desk that goes high enough where I can stand and do computer shit. If you have the opportunity to get like a sitting standing desk, I highly recommend it. If Dude, if you work in an office job, straight up lie. Like if you work in a call center or, or, or any kind of job where you have to sit down and they've got like 30 employees, just lie and tell them that you have chronic back problems and you need a standing desk and they will get one because they won't want to get sued. 100%. Just go to human resources and be like, I've got chronic back pain because of your desks. And then they'll freak out and turn over the whole office. Or at least that's if you live in Australia. I think if you live anywhere else, you're just fucked because, you know, Apparently, in the, in the land of the free, if you got health problems and you and you don't have money, you fucked. That's that's basically America's <laughs> healthcare system. We got a great healthcare system if you can afford it, which you can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I highly recommend a standing desk, man. It's the best shit ever. I've had the most. Um, annoying, I've had one of those, those annoying weeks where I, where I did a lot of things and I was busy, but I, you know, didn't really have too much content to put out for it. Like I really wanted to get by monthly bull out on Tuesday and then put the, uh, the crowdfund update. Cause I'm doing a weekly crowdfund update on my YouTube just so, you know, I'm not spamming it. I'm just going to do it once a week. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to do bi-monthly and then the crowdfund on Thursday, but I just didn't get around to bi-monthly because I, I, I had so many fucking meetings this week. I've never had this many meetings in my life. Just meeting with with cunts. Like, I'm getting... I don't know. I, I suppose as, the, as the, the, the further along in my career I get, the more business-type cunts start to look at me. Basically, what I'm saying is people saw money that I raised on Indiegogo and they were like, oh, oh maybe we could get a cut of this. Maybe this guy, you know, he's onto something. And it's like, ugh. 
I'm, I, you know how many? <laughs> do you want to know how many times I've turned down an agent or a manager or someone offering me brand deals? Things like I'm always, I've always been the the type where I'm very independent. I do everything myself. Right now, I don't have any contracts signed with anybody for anything because um, I've found that I can do most things myself. But um, I will never turn down a meeting because I think it's very important to to always be looking at your business and, and listening to other people and if they think they can make it better and you agree and they're trustworthy, then go for it, work with them. So I always listen, but I've, but I've never real, never agreed to anything, any kind of contract thing with business cunts because I just, I just, I don't know, I just like, I'm just like, look, I can do this better than you and I don't like you personally. <laughs> um, but I've, I've what, what have I, uh, this is a good story. I remember I met up with an agent who was, uh, I can't remember, after, I don't think I've told this story before because I, I was like, nah, I probably shouldn't tell this story. It's a bit rude. But, you know, it happened so long ago that the guy's probably forgotten about it. And I don't think he even noticed that I did it. <laughs> so this agent wanted to meet up with me. I'm not gonna, obviously not going to name names because that's just shitty practice. But this agent wanted to meet up with me. And he was this type to be like, oh, you know, we'll do all of your tours and we'll, we'll do, we'll get you in ads and we'll pitch you for TV and, and movies and we'll get you on the radio and all this, all that kind of manager shit. Oh, we're going to make you career. And I'm sitting over here being like, oh yeah, we'll see. So I get talking to this guy and he, I, I met up with him for lunch and uh, made him buy me lunch. Because, you know, if I'm taking a meeting, all right, you're paying for lunch. <laughs> so I made him pay for lunch and uh, just listened to what he had to say. And um, you know what? He seemed he seemed all right, but he, but he chewed with his mouth open <laughs> the whole time. And I, that's why I said no. Because I was like, you know what? This guy might make me a star, but there is no way I'm going to sit across from him once a month watch, watching whatever he's currently eating being moved around in his mouth. And that's my, that's my favorite reason why I've ever turned down a manager is because he eats with his mouth open. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I don't need, I don't need you that much. You know, I don't need anybody that much. But um, yeah, this this whole week I've just been doing meetings like that, and obviously I haven't. I don't know. It seems like some cool opportunities are coming around, and and they could be um, fruitful for in returns in terms of the special and in terms of upcoming projects. I'm not going to talk about it now because it's the fucking it's my number one hatred of looking at other artists, especially with the online thing, is people saying that they're going to do something and then they don't do it. You know, where, where they'll they'll get like a sniff of an opportunity, and they'll and then they'll just immediately announce to their fan base, "Oh, this is happening! I have the opportunity to do this!" And then their fans get really excited, and they're like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna do this!" And then it turns out that it just doesn't happen. I mean, I, it's a bad habit. I used to do that, where I, where I would be like, "The video's coming out on this day," and it's not edited. Oh, and it's not filmed, but I'm like, I feel like I can get it done by then. So if I announce it, that'll put pressure on me to do it, and then it will get done. But it never works like that. Something would come up, or and then people, people just that all that does is just um, makes your fan base not believe you, really. Like so now I've kind of I, I feel like in, in especially this past year and a half, I've only announced things that that are happening, that are definitely going to happen, or something that I that I hundred percent believe I can do. Um, basically announcing things that are already in the works, like, like the special, you know what I mean? Like I was like, look, I only need half. Um, and I'm, it's definitely going ahead. Even if we don't raise the money, I'll probably film a shitty version, but it's happening. If you want to help me make it better, you can. And, and that worked out well because you guys fucking believe me rather than, you know, announcing 50,000 things in a row and nothing happening from it. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing all of these meetings. I've, I've met up, no joke, I looked through my emails. It's I'm talking to six different people, all of whom I have met in the past two weeks, all of whom are meeting up with me to talk about different business opportunities. And I don't remember any of their names. It's fucking bad. Because the thing is, now with the internet, um, you don't have to meet people to do business. So I haven't seen any of these people's faces. I've never shaken their hands. I've never seen them. They could they could be fucking Malaysian scammers trying to get into my bank details so they can give me my inheritance. Uh, you know, the scammer shit. But 
No, they are all real, but the thing is, I can't fucking remember them, and, and I can barely remember the shit that they're talking about, and all of them think that that they are the only person that I'm talking to at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of all of the special and the crowdfunding and me making content, it's just been the worst fucking week in terms of me seeming professional because these people would call me and they would be like, hey, get up. I'm using fake names, but I got one call yesterday and he's like, hey, good day, mate. It's Tom. Uh, uh, how you going? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm good, Tom. How are you? And I've got no fucking clue who this guy is. But he starts talking to me and it becomes very apparent that I have been speaking to this dude for days over email and I've spoken to him on the phone before. And he's like, yeah, so as we were saying before, blah, 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 this, this and that. And, you know, we, I think this would be a great partnership for us and some good opportunities. And I'm just holding the phone on speaker with my eyes closed, being just being like, what? fuck is this cunt talking about? Who is this person? Who is this guy that that seems to think that he knows me? Like, really, at this point, someone could call me from a private number and then be like, yeah, so about that uh, movie that you're starring in, um, I just wanted to say that, yeah, it, it's all going to production. We're going to fly you out to Hollywood. I just need you to meet me at the airport at 2 p.m. And I'll be like... Well, um, that that sounds like something I've I would have agreed to. So I'm gonna go, and <laughs> and then I would just go there, and they wouldn't be there. Like someone could just come up with a fake opportunity, call me, and then pretend that we've been speaking about it for a week, and I would fucking believe them. I just hate business calls because I don't, I can't. I feel like nothing gets done over the phone. Like, you talk to people and they're like, oh, big opportunities and I'll send it to my office in LA and blah, blah, good potential and brand deals and all the buzzwords and hey, fucking, we're a good institution. Look at the work we've done with other people and I'll call you on Monday. And then you get to the end of the call and it was like, cool, so the only thing we fucking achieve from that is you're going to call me on Monday and then we're going to have another pointless call and then maybe you'll send me a contract and then maybe I'll look at it and then be like, yeah, Fucking, this is shit. You never get anything done over the phone, man. It's I, 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 I can, I can, I just hate the fucking over the phone and over the email business. I just want to meet someone in the in the flesh because that's the only way you can tell that that people aren't bullshitting you. Like everyone can sound great on the phone. Everyone can sound like they're busy and they're wearing a suit. When in reality, they're probably sitting there in a fucking bathrobe in a house paid for by Centrelink talking about their multinational corporation, which is really just them at home and then some chick in LA that's also in a fucking meth house. <laughs> um, so yeah, but <clears throat> look, I, I know I'm being very vague, but I've been talking with a whole bunch of people. I think, I don't know, I think, I think some cool things could happen with this, with this crowdfund and with the special... Um, because we're trying to, you know, I, I, I would love to, obviously it's coming out on my website as a $5 download no matter what happens, but I would love to get it somewhere else as well. Um, I'd love to get it on Netflix or on another cable service. So we're really just trying to talk to a lot of people. And that's why the crowdfund is such an important thing because really that can become part of the pitch because instead of showing them a finished special and being like, hey, we think this is pretty good. What we can do is be like, look, this special raised this much money before it was even made and all of these people want to see it so badly that they threw money at it and then we made it fucking awesome and this product has a fan base already that's such a more enticing offer to a network do you know what i mean so i don't know i hopefully something can come of it which is why i just think that the the crowd fund is great and and i'm, I'm really really happy with how it's all going. I just want to say thank you very much, guys. Like, um, it's, it, it doesn't look like it's slowing down at all. The, the, the people pledging hasn't slowed down and the support has been really, really cool. Like it's up to, um, it's up to 33,000 and I announced a, a, a new stretch goal to, if the crowdfund reaches 40,000, I will literally go overseas and I'm going to take it to 
whichever country has the, the second most amount of pledges. Because right now, the, mo the most people pledging are from Australia, and then it's really just a toss-up between the UK, the US, and Canada. All of those three countries keep one-upping each other every now and then with the pledges. And basically, if it hits 40,000, they'll give me enough money to fly out to, say, say if the UK has the most pledges by the end of the campaign, I'll be able to fly out to the UK with the camera crew and do a real life show and do, you know, an advanced screening and all that kind of shit, which would be so cool because that's something that I really want to do, but the, the financial risk is just too big at this point in my career to actually take it international. But if, if you know, if, if that financial risk is taken out of the equation, then I don't have to worry about how many tickets I can sell. I can just go to the UK and do 100 seats. And it doesn't matter if I spent way more than that on flights and accommodation because, you know, you guys made it possible. And, and, and also, the bigger the crowdfund gets, the more enticing it is for a service like Netflix to be like, fuck, we should put this on our platform. So I really appreciate everybody pledging. And, and you know, I, I, I've, I've been seeing, the more I'm talking about it, I see a few comments here and there being like, oh, he's just being greedy now. But it's like, dude, I'm I'm still, with, with the stretch goals that I've announced, I'm not making any money. <laughs> <laughs> like I just did, uh, I just did some equations of of with the extra content that we added in, and then with the documentary costs, and then uh, fulfilling all of the rewards, and then say if we get to forty thousand, how much the flights and accommodation? I'd probably walk away from this thing if we hit forty with about five grand, which you know it's better than nothing, but it's not like people are looking at this and being like, oh, he's a fucking millionaire. It's like, nah, man, I'm just doing this so. I can make a really fucking cool thing. Because what, what does it for me is not the money at all. I'm really not driven by money. Money to me is, is a tool that I can use to make better comedy. That's all that I see money as, you know. Um, and then I can buy food and, and some t-shirts every now and then. But I'm not really driven by that. <clears throat> what, I, what I really like is making the best shit and then getting as many people to see that as possible. So, you know, right now... When I look at the pledges, I don't look at how much money has been raised. I look at like how many people have pledged. And right now it's at like 1,700 people have pledged, which is really, really cool. Um, and that's a lot of people. But fuck, it really... I wish it was more because <laughs> I, just, I, just I just want my special to be seen as by as many people as possible because um, I think it's going to be my best work. So yeah, if you're listening to this... Um, statistically, you haven't pledged yet, and uh, chuck five bucks in, and you'll get a fucking cool special out of it, alright? Um, that's kind of all that I wanted to say about the special. I appreciate you guys all fucking chipping in and, and sharing it around. It's really, really cool. I'm just I'm just really happy at the moment with, with how, with the support, and I, I went to, um, I went to an Oz Rap show that my friend Greeley uh, organized in Melbourne. Uh, he organized a uh, it's basically a movement called THC, which sounds like marijuana, but it actually stands for Tassie Hip Hop Collective, um, which on the surface sounds like, who, who the fuck wants to listen to Tassie Hip Hop? <laughs> like, I don't like Oz Hip Hop. Why would I want to listen to Tasmanian Hip Hop? But um, <clears throat> it's it's been, it was such a really cool cultural movement coming out of Tasmania, and it's kind of encompassing all of Australian rap, really, um, and, and, and it's, it's making like a really positive movement, and they did their first uh, show in Melbourne, where Greeley, I don't know how the fuck he managed to do this, but he flew out literally 12 people, like a fucking army from Tasmania, and put on this show in Melbourne, and everyone got up and, and performed, and and it was just a really positive thing. The, th the, the show was packed. There was like a couple hundred people there. And it felt like a real community thing. You know, everyone was like, fuck yeah. We're just going to go out and support Australian hip hop and THC. And it was such a, it was such a good night. And I, I took um, Luke Kidgel there to his first Oz Rap show. And, and he was just, he, he enjoyed himself. But it, it reminded me of me the first time that I went to an Oz Rap show where it was like a borderline where you're kind of torn between, oh, this is kind of interesting. What the fuck are they doing? Am I going to get king hit? Holy shit, everyone here is on drugs. <laughs> Who has a knife? Am I going to die tonight? Hey, that guy can rap. Whoa, freestyling, sick. That was just, I could see that was just going through his head, which is, you know, what went through my head the first few times I went to an Oz Rap show. But, um... It was really, really great, and uh, it was a very positive thing, and, and it's, man, so many people were coming up to me. It was my first kind of, um, 
uh, public thing that I've that I've left the house and done, not by myself, like like a like a gathering with lots of people. It was the first thing of that that I've done for a long time because I've been so busy with this special. I've only really had time to hang out with my girlfriend and go go and do stand up. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, um, I lost my voice, which I'll talk to you about why in a little bit. But um, yeah, it was the the first kind of uh, public thing that I did. Uh, for a while, and and especially not si- since the crowdfund launched. And man, it was so many people were just really, really positive about the the comedy special, and they were saying, you know, it's such a cool thing that you're doing, doing it all independent. It's really inspiring. Just just to hear that, not only from the other rappers who like the other creative people that are trying to make a, a living out of doing what they're doing, but just from the the people, the regular people who just like looking at shit, they were like, man, it's really, really cool that you're doing it like this and it's independent and just funded by the fans and, and you don't have to worry about censorship and you're not chasing after fucking corporate money where, you ha- where you'd have to suck dick to get it and mainstream exposure and all that kind of shit and just, just making it as, as accessible as you can for fans. It was just like a really positive thing and it made me feel, it made me feel really good about the direction that I'm taking. Um, made me go, you know what? I'm doing the right thing where if, if, if all of these people can look at that and be like, fuck, that's a, that's a positive way to, to make your, make your creative mark. You know, it was, it, it was like, <clears throat> it was like everyone was looking at the special and being like, that's just a fair thing to do. What a, what a fair thing to do. And what a scary risk for him to take. And I'm very happy that it's, that it's, that it's working. So I don't know. It was, it was really cool. Um, this isn't funny, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I don't know. I'm going to talk. I'm going to stop talking about the special. If you want to, if you want to pledge, it it really mean the world to me. And and you know, it's. I, I feel if you like my stuff, it's in your best interest because it's my best fucking shit I've ever done. All right. Anyway, now, <clears throat> sorry, I've lost. I've um, really battling with my voice because uh, at this THC show, um, I. Uh, did my debut rap performance and I was nervous as fuck. I was, I was shitting my pants about this thing, but, um, basically if you don't know, I do a little bit of rap stuff on the side. I've got a, I've got a rap, uh, mixtape out called not very good yet. And, uh, I think the name says it all. I don't think it's, it's not very good yet. It's not bad. I'm not going to say that it's bad, but you know, it's not good. It's not very good yet. You know, I think it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's slightly above average for, you know, I mean, it's, pre- it's a pretty good first entry at rap because rap's something that I've really liked and uh, I-, I produce a little bit of music. Like you've heard all, all of the Lure Review themes and-, and the intros to all of my series. I produce the music to that and, and I don't know. I- I'm just the type of person where I really like something. I really struggle not to do it or not to try it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I-, I do a little bit of rap stuff as the, the name I-, I rap under is Christopher Ruse. I'm, I'm going to come up with a mixtape probably after we record the special. I don't know. I, I don't want to bombard people with too much shit at once, but anyway, um, I did a track with Greeley a while ago for THC. Um, if you want to look it up, search THC Greeley, uh, Ruse, and you'll be able to listen to it. And, uh, Greeley was like, do you want to jump up and do the track? just one. And I was like, fuck, I don't know how to rap. I don't know if I would be good at that, but I really want to do it. So I was like, you know what? The best place to have your debut is at someone else's show, because if you fuck it up, it's fine because you're going to, everyone's going to forget about you and it doesn't matter. So the show started at eight, um, the whole day beforehand, the day before the show. And then during the day, um, and, and before the show started, I was just listening to myself on a loop, all of the lyrics, trying to memorize them, trying to figure out where I was going to breathe, because that was something that I have, um, cause I wasn't nervous to get up. I don't get stage fright, but uh, I was nervous to do, to perform in a completely different way. Cause I do stand up comedy all the time, but there's so many differences with rap where <clears throat> like the main difference is breath control. Like if I'm doing a joke and I'm yelling and I'm 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 just saying a, a massive sentence really quick. If I run out of breath, I can just stop and breathe and then get back into it on my own time. But with rap, you're yelling into a microphone, saying things really really fast, and if you need to breathe, 
you can't stop and then keep going because you have like a, a, a an instrumental underneath you that doesn't un, that doesn't do anything for you. You know what I mean? It just plays until it ends. So if you need to stop and breathe, the music underneath you is going to keep going. <clears throat> There's nothing you can do about that. So I was just practicing all of my words, trying to make sure that I remember them and trying to figure out where I was going to breathe so that I that I wouldn't have to um, stop. Um, and anyway, basically, so the show started at eight and then 1130 comes around and it's my turn to get up and I'm fucking nervous as hell. The crowd was very supportive. Greeley explained that it was my first ever rap thing and everyone was like, yeah, fucking oath can't give it a go. Aussie hip hop. If you fuck it up, I'm so pissed. I won't even remember it. So I get up and then my beat starts playing that I made and then this energy came into me and I was like, I'm the fucking best. And then I started yelling into the microphone. I nailed all of my bars. I was, uh, if you can listen to the track, like it's quite fast and quite aggressive. Um, you can hear it on YouTube and I was just fucking nailing it. And then I got halfway through the track and then I forgot to breathe. <laughs> I got to the end of like eight bars and then I was like, I can't, what's, what, where did I get up to? I was like, um, oh yeah, so the last words was like, I bet they're burning now. <sighs> and then the fucking track just kept going and I lost my place. It was halfway through my verse. Greeley notices that I'm, that I've completely fucked it. And then I can't hear my beat properly, so I don't know where I am. And then I, I was like halfway through my verse, there was about, I, I think there was about, at least 30 seconds of it left. And I don't think, I honestly don't think anyone noticed that I fucked it up because it just sounded like I ended my verse and then it was Greeley's turn and he fucked up. But then I said something, I was like, oh no, I've forgotten the words. And then everyone was like, ah, that's a bit, we, we, we paid for tickets. <laughs> and I fucked it up and I just felt embarrassed. But then Greeley started freestyling and making up some words and he covered it really, really well. And then he did his verse and I, I knew, I knew some of the words to his verse. So while he was doing his, I kind of wrapped the punchlines and backed him up and it was uh, overall pretty good and all of the all of the the um the other rappers afterwards were like man that was so good for your first time you 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 only you only fucked up breathing like they were like you know you had confidence and you you were loud enough and you nailed all of the words that you were trying to say you just forgot to breathe which is a common thing and then lost your place. So I, I don't know. It was really good, and, and and um, it was a lot of fun. It was so so different from stand up. Um, and I can't really explain how it was. Like like when I started rapping, this fucking energy came up, and I was like, I believe in the fucking words that I'm saying. I'm a sick cunt. I'm the fucking best. It was such a different feeling from doing stand up, where I'm like, where when I'm do- performing stand up, I'm like, ah, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something a little bit cheeky, and I'm gonna make you laugh at something you shouldn't laugh at. Ah, gotcha. You shouldn't laugh at that. I bet you're fucking worried about what your girlfriend's thinking. That like, like when I'm on stage, I'm in this kind of like playful energy of, ah, I got ya, that's a little bit silly, you shouldn't say that, should ya, ah, but I just did, and I made you laugh, so who's worse, me or you, like, that's the kind of energy that I'm at when I'm performing comedy, but then when I was performing rap, it was, like, completely different, it was like, I'm the fucking, I'm a fucking sick cunt, and I'm really tough, and I'm, it was like, I don't know, it was a completely different energy from comedy, and I quite liked it, so I would like to do some more rap stuff in the future, um, but you know, we'll see, I'm focusing on stand up at the moment, especially with this special coming up, I can't really afford to try a new thing, but who knows, in, in the future, anything can happen, alright, what it really does is give me a, um, a massive respect for what, uh, rappers do, like when I did it, and when I, when I, when I, when I fucked it up, and, and, and also when I had that experience of nailing, because I nailed the first half, I was like, fuck, I'm, I fucking, I did that perfect, but then I just completely fucked the second half, it made me realise how hard it is to do, not just an entire song, but to do an hour of that without fucking it up, it's exhausting, 
And when I when I watch people like Greeley um, or other performers I really love, like Curso and Rates, they do the rapping shit for a whole hour, but the entire hour they're jumping up and down. Like they're not just. I I basically just stood still and focused on saying my words loud enough and clear enough and breathing. But then you watch people like Curso, Rates, Greeley. They're doing all of their words, nailing it, making sure they're loud enough, making sure they breathe properly. And they're jumping around, they've got hand motions, and, and, and they're also looking at people in the crowd, grabbing phones, selfie recording themselves, like doing all of this shit at once, while also nailing the basic, most important part, which is the performance side of it, um, <clears throat> and getting the words right, and, and remembering to breathe, like... Me rapping the words and yelling them was hard enough for me to breathe. I couldn't imagine doing that while I'm also like rigorously exerting my body. It's um actually quite incredible and it really gave me an appreciation for that. So yeah, I mean that was a fucking thing that I did. Um all right, shall we get into the worst part of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen? I I, I think we should. I think we should. Let's get into the miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh if you don't know, miss bit at the end is where I answer questions that people have sent in. Um, if you want to send in a life advice question, send it through to podcast at com. That's my email. Send it through, summarize it in the headline so I can, you know, I have an idea of what I'm going into before I open them. And then, uh, I don't know, if I if I like it or if I think I can be funny um, or if I think that I can give you some good, good advice, I will uh, read it out on the podcast. All right. So here's the first question. Uh, the subject line is, a girl keeps touching me against my will even though I've said no. See, women get away with a lot of things that we just can't. If, if, if this, or I haven't read the email yet, but already I'm thinking, if this was a guy keeps touching me against my will, even though I've said no, I would never see this email. This email would never get sent to me because the person would go directly to the police and that guy would just be sent to jail because obviously that's what you do when someone keeps touching you. That's a fair, I'm not, I'm not saying that's unfair. I'm saying that's what should happen. That is exactly what should happen. You know, someone's touching me against my will, send that cunt to jail. Um, but because it's a girl, for some reason, that's not the logical conclusion. Oh no, I'm getting sexual sexually assaulted. But they have a vagina. How do I respond to this? Punch them in the face and then send them to jail. That's my answer before I've even read the email. All right, let's get into the email though. A girl keeps touching me against my will, even though I've said no. All right. Hi, so I'm Michelle and I have a bit of an issue. A bit? See, that's another thing where it's like, oh, I don't know if this is... If this is a horrible thing or not, someone's sexually assaulting me against my will, uh, and uh, I, I don't really know if that's a bad thing, you know, by just... <laughs> uh, I have a bit of an issue. I'm currently in year 12 and doing VET music with a band, and I have a girlfriend who I care about deeply. Dude, wh- what is... Is every single girl who likes my stuff a lesbian? <laughs> because I, I feel like I have in my demographic an unusual amount of lesbians. Because the last week's email was from a lesbian. And I've had a few uh, comments from from gay women. Not that I'm, I'm not complaining about this, by the way, just before I get into it. I just think it's really uh, interesting that, that this definitely seems to be a thing that I don't notice in any other fan bases of comedians. I have a very strong lesbian demographic in in the people who watch my shit and I don't know why because I'm it's not like I've it's not like I've I've become a crusader for for gay women's rights or even talk about that at all I just I don't know maybe we just get along with each other good on you all power to the dykes like I so many there were so many like um female couples at my at my tour this year there there was at least I reckon I, I I met at least five or six uh, people that were there with their girlfriends and, and they were they, they were gay. I don't know. It's, it's just so interesting to me. I mean, I guess it's pretty cool if if I'm just if I'm just a, a, a dude that attracts uh, internet trolls and lesbian couples. I mean, so be it. <laughs> um, 
so so there you go. If if anyone was listening to this and and you're a gay woman and you're wondering if you if you should come and catch a show, you definitely should. In fact, make make a whole night of it. <laughs> come and come and hang out, and and it'll be the the most lesbian outing you've ever, you've ever seen since fucking I don't know. I don't know what you guys do. What else do you guys do? What do lesbian couples do together, like outside of their homes? Um, baseball games? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's get let's get back to this email. Um, oh, if you're if you're a lesbian couple and you're listening, what do you do together? Uh, and and have you ever come to my show? If so, uh, why? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'm Michelle, I've got a bit of an issue, I'm currently in year 12 doing VET music with a band, and I have a girlfriend who I care about deeply. Alright, so, uh, lesbian woman with a girlfriend, that's who she is, she's in a band. Now, this issue started earlier this year, and it's getting worse, so I don't know what to do. What, is your girlfriend doing it? i just read the email, dickhead. I don't know what to do. A girl in my band is being very physical with me against my will. Touching me, trying to tickle me, all that uncomfortable shit. Ah, yeah, fuck off. And is constantly making inappropriate comments to me, telling me I'm good with my fingers. Ah, that's gross. That I smell nice and how she thinks I look good. Yeah, that's creepy as fuck. That's the kind of shit that you would expect to hear from, like, I don't know, just some creepy-ass dude. Like a 60-year-old man. I bet you're uh, good with your fingers. Hey. (laughs) Not from some fucking girl in band class. Although, I have to say, I'm putting any money on this girl plays the tuba. I don't know why. I just feel like the tuba is the lesbian sexual criminal's instrument. Like like, Like, if you look up, I bet I can find lesbian in... Sexual deviant tuba. I feel like that's the thing that'll definitely come up. (laughs) Why am I even looking at this shit? It just came with a whole bunch of fucking porn with tubers in it. That's so not what I want to look at. Um, alright, I'm trying to... Okay. She keeps telling me that I'm good with my fingers, that I smell nice, and how she thinks I look good. She even said to my girlfriend that I thought she... Oh, you can't spell. She even said to my girlfriend that she thought it'd be hot when we fuck. Oh, that's creepy as hell. I really don't feel comfortable with her saying these comments about me and my relationship, and I've told her this, but she doesn't stop. I've told her in the past to stop touching me, but she just won't. Yeah, this is, um... This is fucked. Uh, this, if this is sexual assault. If you told someone not to do that and they keep doing it and they keep making filthy comments, that's what. That's exactly what sexual assault is. Just because she's a girl doesn't really make it any different. Um, <clears throat> she will also continuously ask how my girlfriend and I are doing and want to know if we're still together. Okay, so she wants to be with you, basically, and she's just being a real fucking creep about it. I've told my girl about this, obviously, and she's very creeped out by it as well, but she says I'll have to wait until the year is over before I can do anything, because if I say anything right now, it'll mess up the class, and I agree, but it's hard. Why does that make sense? You'll mess up the class? How well does this bitch play the tuba? Like, I don't care how how fucking good you are at blowing the tuba, you can't just sexually harass your bandmates. Fuck the class. This doesn't have anything to do with the class. How is it going to fuck the class if there's one person less in it? Or even if it does fuck the class, how is that more important than your safety? Because that's what it comes down to. If this bitch is doing this shit in a public place... You know, next thing you know, it's going to be in a private place when she thinks you're alone, and it's going to be a lot fucking worse than dirty comments and touching you against your will. Like, yeah, that's not... your girl. I'm sorry, but your girlfriend is 100% wrong, and so are you. You can't ignore sexual assault just because it'll mess up the class. 
I've tried to put up with this, but I can't anymore. I feel so uncomfortable and don't want to do music anymore, which is what I used to love. She makes me scared of going to class because I just don't want to have to deal with her and be touched when I don't want to. I worry if I say too much, though, that it'll fuck up the whole band's dynamic and I'll get a shitty ATAR since I'm already shit at school and music is the only class I'm good at. So you wor- okay, so you're in a band with this girl and, and you, you guys are working towards getting a good mark together. Um, I can, okay, so I kind of, kind of understand your concern. Uh, I'm sorry for loading all of this shit on you, but I don't know what to do. Do I bring up my issue now or do I just wait it out and block her out of my life as soon as the year ends? Sorry this is long and if you read it on the podcast, I apologize for the mass suicide I just caused. Thanks, can't have a shit one. Um, yeah, you're 100% wrong. Um, what you're doing is definitely the wrong way to go about it. Don't ignore it. Definitely don't ignore it um, because this kind of shit, if you ignore it, people like that take your lack of action as consent um, and then they just start pushing the boundaries like they 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 push the boundaries and then they get to this point and you still haven't cracked it and then they push it a bit more and you still haven't cracked it and then next thing you know they've got a fucking toilet plunger on your face and a waterboarding you and you're like oh but i want to get a good atar like don't give this bitch this don't give her any concessions just because you're in the same band what you need to do is you need to um tell the school exactly what you've just told me i mean i i assume that that they know that you're gay or you know what it doesn't even fucking matter does it it doesn't matter if you're gay it because that doesn't even that doesn't even come into it the point the point is this chick is touching you against your will and that's fucking horrible so yeah i would absolutely tell um the school about it um and also your parents i mean i don't know how accepting your parents are of you, but even then, it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter at all. If even if they hate gays, maybe they'd be a good ally to have <laughs> in this battle. Um, but yeah, I know this kind of shit is hard and it's weird because you're in a band. But at at the end of the day, what's happening to you is horrible, and you really need to tell somebody that is not me. Like I can't help you. You know, any of I, I can't I can't I can't solid advice my way out of this situation for you. What you need to do is you need to tell someone who actually can do something. So tell the school, tell your teacher um, exactly what you've told me. I mean, I don't know if you have any messages. If you have weird messages like Facebook or text or anything that's that's really good, just screenshot all of that shit um, and then print it out and then take it to, if you have a school counselor, take it to them or if you've got like a year level coordinator or if you or if you any teacher that you trust the most just take it to them and explain what's going on and they will separate you and you know what it's not going to affect your fucking ATAR I can tell you that right now they they in any any kind of effect say you're in a band right and you guys are working on getting a good score together any if if the reason why your band doesn't do well is because one of the bandmates was touching your tits against your will they're not going to be like, well, rules are rules, giving her a zero, couldn't keep a band together. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's not what's going to happen. They're obviously going to take that um, into consideration. And yeah, there's there's no way that this is going to turn out bad for you. You need to tell somebody about it. Don't listen to your girlfriend. It's not cool. All right. Whatever this chick is doing to you, it's not okay. You obviously don't want it and you need to tell somebody. All right. So please, for me, Go and talk to somebody about this and for your own sake as well, because it sounds horrible and yeah, it has, yeah, it's fucked basically. And obviously you've already tried telling her no, so fuck her life, all right? She's a cunt, okay? The end, all right? So I look forward to next week if uh, any other, if any other, if any other lesbians have some life dilemmas, apparently this, is, this has just become the, the lesbian lifeline. Uh, for for Lewis Spears' fans. So if, if, if any of the ladies out there are having problems with their ladies, just hit me up because because uh, for some reason you guys think that I'm an expert in improving gay women's lives. All right, that's the that's the Spearhead Sundays Lesbian Life Days podcast. <laughs> All right, next question. Hey Lewis, I uh, love the podcast and you stand up. Thank you very much. 
Uh, my name is Trent, and I'm in high school. I've been talking to a girl for a little while now who goes to the same school and is in my year group. Call her Sarah like you always do. All right, you got me. Fair, fair call, you cunt. She deals with depression and anxiety and has some really shitty has had some really shitty experiences in life, but I don't know much detail as to what, except for multiple suicide attempts. See, this is the other the other side of my fan base. Like there's what like half of them are clearly uh lesbian couples, and then the other half are just are just lonely dudes that are that are way too set on attracting women with fucked up lives. <laughs> I gotta save her! Um, multiple suicide attempts. All right. One night she admitted that she liked me. It was around the same time I began to have feelings for her. A few nights after that, about two weeks ago, she said she thought talking to someone else who also has some issues wasn't good for her mental state. She apologized and stopped speaking to me. About a week after that, she said she'd made a mistake and we started talking again. We agreed to meet up in the last week of school holidays, 17th of July. We were talking about meeting up a few days later, just sorting out the details, when she said that she couldn't do it. She said that due to past life experiences up until last year, she couldn't even talk to guys for more than a few minutes. Uh, I think you're dealing with a very damaged individual. Um... It sounds like that some horrible things may have happened to this girl, man. I would tread very carefully for your sake and her own. Uh, not long after, she started ignoring me. Now, I'm not too sure as what I should do because I think I like her. And even if we don't start dating, I would like to keep in touch with her. Any help is appreciated. Thanks. Uh, man, I, I think that you should let this one go. Um... Because you can't... Okay. This girl sounds like... Uh, is probably a lovely human, but she's had some horrible things happen to her. And she thinks the best thing for her is to be away from you. Um, and it, it, says, it says that she said you have some issues as well. Maybe... I don't know what you're dealing with because you didn't write it down. But maybe whatever you're dealing with reminds her of the horrible shit that happened to her. And it's not good for her brain because she's focusing on fixing herself. Obviously, right now, she sounds like she's not okay. Um, she can't really focus on helping you. Uh, I've always been a really big believer on you need to be okay as an individual by yourself alone before you can have a successful relationship with another person who is also okay by themselves like I, f I feel like the, the best kind of relationship and really the only one that truly works is two individuals that are completely happy on their own who don't need each other form a team because it makes both of their individual lives better and th th they genuinely enjoy being part of the team which is the relationship does that make sense I feel like that is the the most the best kind of relationship where where neither partner is um is dependent on the other, whether emotionally or however you want to look at it. They're not like, I, I need you to be happy because I can't be happy by myself. That's just a doomed relationship because that's going to send one of you insane because you can't fix that human because they're like, oh, you need to fix me. But you, no one has the ability to fix another human. That all comes from within. So I think this girl might just be making a good decision for her own mental health and you should probably just let it go, man. Um, also, it's... I don't want to sound like a cunt, but it's it's generally never worth getting involved with someone who's incredibly damaged because it just brings you down. Um, and I'm not saying that that you should that if you see someone who's sad, you should be like, oh, they're sad, get him out of my life. I'm just saying that maybe if this girl is has been through some horrible shit and she has told you, I don't think I should be with you because it's not good for my mental health. I think maybe you should just believe her. And uh, let it go. So ba basically what she's saying is um, when she sticks her hand into the fire, she goes, man, that's really hot. That hurts. Right. And then she takes her hand out of the fire. So so she's fine. But then imagine if the fire was like, oh, but I just really like having her hand in me. So I think I'm going to move over closer to her hand. And then she's like, ah, fuck. That's, you're the fire, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, you're a big old fireplace. Um, let her go. Uh, let her figure out her own life and try to be happy by herself. Um, especially if she's just 
started ignoring you as well. I think she's obviously just made a big decision and, and been like, yeah, this guy is cool, but man, he fucks with my head. And that's not your fault. That's just whatever she's been through in her past has led her to the conclusion. If I talk to people who have similar issues or, or whatever, that makes me feel sad. So yeah, leave her alone, man. There's plenty of girls out there. You're in high school. You're going to find heaps of other chicks that, that, you know, would, would like to be around you instead of treating you as a, as a trigger for their own mental illness or whatever's happened to them. All right. Not saying that going through bad things makes you a bad person. Just saying that sometimes you need to weigh up whether that's getting involved with that kind of shit is actually going to improve your life or just send you on an impossible mission to fix a human that cannot be fixed by anyone other than themselves. All right. So that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I uh, just wanted to say once again, uh, I would really appreciate anyone who um, pledges to the campaign. At this at this point, I'm not really worried about the the amount of money that gets raised because we've raised the money. But what I really, really want is just people um, to see the special. So put if you put five bucks in, you're going to get the special. I really... Um, truthfully just want you to see it. So, um, check out my Indiegogo. It's all on my Facebook and my YouTube and Twitter and all of my fucking links. Uh, put five bucks in and you'll get the special. I would really like to get that number up to 3000. Um, and I know statistically, if you're listening to this, you probably haven't pledged yet and it would really mean the world to me if you did. So, um, yeah, thank you very much guys. Let's see how many people I can get my stand up out to in the next 20 days is all we have left. So please do pledge, please share, and I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one.